Since two, three goals scored in each of their last four games. Karen Keelt, one of the most exciting talents in the game. She is the Irish News Camogie Player of the Year. Katie McEnenley scored a hat-trick in the Ulster final against Antrim and is in top form. The Galway manager, Tony Ward, made two changes to this side after their semi-final victory over Waterford. Wing-back Lorraine Farrell comes in with Maria Breheny added at left half forward. The injured Molly Dunn loses out, as does Rachel Monaghan, who starred in their last four win. Tara Kenny plays with a hand injury. Aoife Linsky is also selected, even though she has a cracked rib. Seven of this side haven't played in Croke Park before, but it's a team filled with experience too. Aoife Linsky, one of five on the panel, who were part of the last Galway team to win the intermediate at All-Ireland three years ago. Almost ready to go, Michael. Talk to you shortly. We are, Daryl, on a lovely sunny day, as you can see here at uh, Croke Park. The Galway girls in a huddle. And just the final thoughts then from our panellist, Jill Horn, who's going to win this intermediate final? I think it's going to be a cracker of a game, but I'm going to tip Galway on this one. And where do you think Galway will have the strength to win it? I think in their forward line. I think the uh, Emma Kil uh, Kilkenny in mid our centre forward She's uh, unlucky actually not to make the senior team this mm -hmm. year. I think she'll add something to the to the forward line, and I think uh, Curtin in full forward will do sure. an awful lot of damage. So you're looking to have the strength down the middle. Absolutely. If they get enough ball into their forward line, they should do it. Therese, do you see the same way? Or well, I'm going to say the same. Yes, I think <laughs> that um, you know uh, the Nee Cassidy's. Uh, they're playing full back and centre back, two sisters for Derry, very strong players. And on top of the aforementioned half back line I was talking about earlier, you know, get the ball down. I think Derry forwards are going to play it really wide. They're very to open up the space and yeah I'm sticking with Derry. All right so thanks for that all set to go then for this intermediate final commentary on Derry versus Galway from Darren Maloney and Cyril Farrell. Michael thank you it's a blustery day here in Croke Park even though the sun has come out we did have a fair bit of rain earlier on and the uh, fear was there was a few showers during the Premier Junior final between Down and me that uh, that would carry on into this intermediate final but thankfully the rain clouds have gone away there's the referee Jer O'Dowd from Limerick and the conditions pretty good the wind uh, blowing from left to right and our camera position as you will see we're over in the Cusick stand today not in the normal uh, Hogan stand position but uh, it is blustery and Galway won the toss we are waiting to see what uh, they will do in the first half will they decide to play with the wind or play against the wind second time these two counties have met this year and uh, the first time they met was in the league Galway had something like a 10 point lead with 12 minutes remaining and Derry came back to win by a single point that is Galway's only defeat of the year Derry come in here with a 100% record 12 wins out of 12 they were in the final in 2001 but lost that and this is Galway's third appearance in the intermediate final having won it in 2004 and 2009 Cyril Farrell here with me Cyril your thoughts on this yeah, Dara, it's a nice day, but like the breeze is pretty strong. Whichever team takes the breeze, it needs to be up six or seven points at half time. It's, it's that kind of a breeze. It's blown into the hill 16 in. Now, it didn't take that much effect in the, in the junior game, but you'll find as the standard goes up, Dara, they'll be driving the ball that bit further, and you, you, you know you'd want to be leading by that much. Galway on paper look kind of very young, whereas looking through the dairy, it seems to be very physically stronger, I'd say, but Galway kind of probably lighter and faster. It'll be interesting to see who's going to take the breeze because it, it will have a big bearing on this game. It, it, you know, the pitch is absolutely immaculate. There's a lovely atmosphere around here. And where we are, it's quite blustery and cold. And over on the Hogan stand side, the sun is shining. So it's typical Irish weather. Yeah, absolutely. We're just going to see what way the two teams uh, line up. You got a brief uh, glimpse of Aoife Nikoshida. Three sets of sisters playing on the Derry team. And Aoife's sister, Ailish, playing just in front of her. Gráinne and Maeve McGoldrick playing in the uh, Derry team as well. Galway will play from right to left, so that they're going to defend the Hill 16 end of Croke Park in the first half, and they are playing against the wind, having won the toss. Yeah, it's very interesting, Dara. That's that's a it's a good it's, it's a it's a big call, like, but they've made their minds up. They won the toss and decided to play against it, so only time will tell. And this intermediate All Ireland final for 2012 is underway with Galway hoping to uh, launch the first attack. Derry have been scoring freely as Emma Kilkenny, who will lead this Galway attack, gets the first shot away in this All-Ireland final. And Emma scores the first point of this All-Ireland final inside the first 20 seconds. A really good start for Kinvara's Emma Kilkelly. Yeah, Derry, she carried a lot of experience. This one is used to playing like senior hurling for the club and she's a very experienced player, the top player, actually.
ball back in play and Katie McEnany for Derry, a very exciting corner forward who will drift out the field like Bronya McGoldrick in the other corner as Derry attempt to equalise and they've managed to do just that. Karen Keel, the Irish News Camogie Player of the Year for 2012, wiping out that Galway advantage with a very fine point. McEnany did a lot of the hard work, fine finish too from Keel. Yeah, McEnany seems to be playing very far out the field, like she got a lovely ball there and popped a beautiful pass. There's two scores already in, in just over a minute. Ball back in play. The wind didn't seem to upset Roisin Kalman in the Galway goal with her puck out. Got it comfortably to halfway. It's a Galway line ball. Which Clodagh McGrath will take. Her dad, no stranger to uh, Croke Park, Hopper McGrath. Start here many a day for Galway's senior hurlers over the years. The clearance from uh, Aileen McCusker of Derry up towards Theresa McElroy, but unable to get any traction in that half forward line for Derry. It's a bright start for Galway. Maria Breheny, her brother is Podrick Breheny on the Galway senior hurling panel. Ailish Nicostela really should have uh, got her hands on that. Now it's Ailish O'Reilly for Galway, and that's a really fine point. Yeah, Ailish O'Reilly. You can see already there that both sets of fours are very, very sharp. Like Galway have two attacks and two scores. And Derry have only one tackle and one score, but you could, both, both sets of fours seem to, at the moment seem to have the measure of the backs. Claire O'Kane with the puck out, unable to hold it was Sinead Cassidy. A scrap for possession and Galway winning it out around the middle just in these early stages. That's Maria Breheny who fires it in and chasing it down all a, all a curtain, but Maeve McGoldrick gets there first. Maeve's sister playing on the team and her brothers play senior football for Derry very famous GA family in Derry the McGoldricks Galway their half forwards putting significant pressure on the Derry half back line Ailish Nikoshida picked up the ball but Derry have got a free they are playing with the wind in the first half and there's the collision and Deirdre Burke came off the worst of that collision. Yeah, she'll probably shake it off. Like she usually, she's a good midfield player for her club as well. Plays at St Thomas's club, brother of David Burke, senior player for Galway. She'll probably against the breeze, especially Dara. She'll be coming out a bit to help out the midfield. She should be all right in a minute. You may be able to hear the the breeze whistling against the effects microphones around the pitch. It is significant, certainly, and Derry have the aid of it in the first half here in this All-Ireland Intermediate Final. Derry, the Division Two League champions, the Ulster Senior Champions. If they win here today, they'll go up to Senior Championship Camogie next year. Huge prize for them. They've never been there. Now Grania McNichol, the Derry midfielder, and Grania putting that wide, and that, that is the first wide of this All-Ireland Final. Grania McNichol, who has a reputation for uh, scoring Spectacular points from way out the field, but uh, her range just off with that attempt. Roisin Kalnam was a, a sub on the Galway senior team this year. They were beaten by Cork in the All-Ireland senior semi-final. Here comes Gronja McNichol again, trying to make up for her mistake of a, a few seconds ago, and does just that. Two points apiece. Gronja McNichol of Swatra opening her account, and they're going point for point. Yeah, there is. She's got a lovely ball here, picks it up, has a little look, nice breeze behind her, floats it over the bar. Roshan Kalman not hanging around with the puck out, getting the ball back in play almost immediately. Elishni Kashida firing that in, and a tester for Kalman. Oh, she took her right off it. And an unfortunate mistake for Roshan Kalman in the Galway goal. Elishni Kashida will get the credit. It was just a, a hopeful ball forward. And Roisin, perhaps the sun in her eyes, but she took her eyes off it, and Derry get a goal. Yeah, Derry, too, he's a spot on there, because there is a strong sun down, down in her eyes there. And even though you have to wear the helmet, there's no peaking, but that, that's a soft goal for Derry, and puts him in the driving seat. Derry, with three goals in each of their last four championship matches, have won on the board already, and we're in the sixth minute. Aoife Linsky, who's married to Alan Kane, the, he was Galway senior goalkeeper for the football team in 2001. Referee gives Galway a free. Yeah, you can hear the goal mentors trying to settle down their team and shout at them just to take their time and relax this moment because they are playing against a strong storm. And Derry at the moment are just kind of 
if they get another goal, so they could push on. The experienced Aoife Linsky with the free for Galway, fired into the full forward line. Ball breaks loose, Aoife Nikoshida, who's only 18 years of age. Not a great clearance from Aoife, credit the forward, who was Orla Curtin, who put pressure on her from a very difficult angle. And uh, there was a player in the square. Dangerous ball going in across that high, and it's a free out right to us. There was one inside the square, but like it, Orla Curtin has already shown a nice bit of form. Won a ball there that probably should have been cleared by uh, Aoife Nikoshida, but like Jerry will clip this down the, with, with the breeze behind. But to believe I'm clear, OK, and will drive this down the pitch. Gronje McNichol has seen a fair bit of for Derry in the early stages of this intermediate final. Now Sinead Cassidy with the hand pass forward. Now it's Gronje McGoldrick in that deeper position, and Gronje has put that one wide. They have the wind with them, they have the lead, but that is their second wide in the seventh minute. Yeah, they're, they're well on top of the foot in the ball's way, but with this strong breeze, they want to be trying to work a goal or two because like, they're, they're shooting from outside, which is lovely when you're getting it, but goals are going to probably win this game. Roisin Callanan, I'm sure her confidence took a, a battering after that mistake, which saw the ball trickle in behind her. Aileen McCusker, the Derry right half back. Now it's Shauna Quinn. Plays with Dunk Given, won an intermediate club championship a few weeks ago, and she's in fine form, and you can see she's brought that form to Croke Park. Shauna Quinn, 1-3 to two points and her first of this All-Ireland final. Yeah, lovely turn, she, she kind of fumbled it first, but once she got it on the mark, was never going to get caught. Aoife Linsky of Galway. Did well to move it forward under serious pressure. Possibilities for Galway here, Emma Kilkelly is free, but the Derry defence cut open, and now it's Curtin and a brilliant save from Claire O'Kane. Emma Kilkelly has it, will they get something out of it, the Galway player, the full forward Orla Curtin is down injured and the referee is going to allow treatment for Galway's Orla Curtin, what a stop by Claire O'Kane though to deny Galway but looked like a certain goal. Yeah Dara looked, looked on here like cutting straight through, she's causing a lot of trouble to Orla Curtin, I think they had to go like on a great save, comes out and smothers, Claire O'Kane comes out and smothers the ball and it's a vital save and keeps keeps Derry that, that, that few points in front, the four points up, but ball will be thrown in now so like Got, Derry will breathe a sigh of relief there. Read the danger brilliantly, Claire O'Kane, who played for Derry in the 07 junior final. And Orla Curtin, thankfully, is OK to continue for Galway. And the ball will be thrown in by the referee in the 20-metre line to restart the game. So a bit of a let-off that was for Derry. Great intervention from O'Kane in their goal as well. Galway playing into the teeth of what's a bit of a gale, and that was a foul there, I think, chopping down and a free in from about 50 metres out for Galway. Haven't scored since the second minute. Emma Kilkelly has really driven this Galway team on. Rachel Monaghan is on the bench today, a fine free taker, but Emma Kilkelly will take the freeze today. And ball just moved back a yard or two. With that wind in her face, this is going to have to be some smash to send it over the bar. Kilkelly drops it short. Tricky one for the Derry defenders, and Claire O'Kane not letting that one get through, keeping her eye on it. Sinead Cassidy for Derry. Ball played into the centre, and that Gronje McNichol, the other midfielder, making it very difficult for Lorraine Farrell, but Farrell has it back now, Sinead Keane. Derry getting possession back, Gronje McNichol letting the ball go early, and possibilities here. Roisin Kalman, you could see her with the hand up above the top of her helmet, trying to keep the sun out of her eyes as Una Bradley was bearing down on goal, the Derry full forward. Yeah, there was a chance there for Derry for another goal, and Roisin did very well. He took him out and smothered the, the shot, because this ball was just bouncing, a little flick here to be gone in. Derry full forward just didn't get it onto it. Una Bradley just didn't get, it, just didn't get enough pace on it. Roshan Kalman favouring the other side with the puck out this time. 